good evening uh, friends uh, somebody once asked me what does it feel like to launch a book i always say that it was only the first book that caused all the excitement after that it's like delivering several of them and you're very happy when the book is out but each book is an experience of a lifetime by itself and i would like to say that it was so as far as the madras cricket club was concerned when i became a member 30 years ago i don't think i ever would have dreamt that a day would come when i would be asked to compile the history of the book once again i say once again because in my opinion as president ramesh mentioned there cannot be a finer book than mr mutaya's spirit of chepok which is perhaps a defining book as far as sporting clubs are concerned anywhere in the world and how to go about writing them so uh, mine is only a sequel as far as that book is concerned and if at all books can be measured they must be measured against that particular work but as it happened because of advancements in technology i was able to lay my hands on more resources uh ramesh mentioned that you know we were able to look at photographs that were not available earlier i'll just give you a couple of examples one was you know we always speak about how the club was founded in 1846 and i remember when i was asked to make a presentation one year ago i kept saying 1848 and it was prem who at the end of the a uh, presentation actually corrected me and said no no it's 1846 and that's quite right so in 1896 there must have been a golden jubilee celebration of the club we know that uh, you know the centenary of the club was not celebrated because the world war had come and things like that and then uh, india was becoming independent and the colonials were not very keen on celebrating it they had probably other worries on their mind and so but we do know that a golden jubilee of the club was celebrated we had no records of that and then uh, karthik bhat whom ramesh mentioned discovered an interview with penny quick the man who designed the great mullai periyar dam and who was a secretary of the club as well and today if we are here in chepok it is really thanks to penny quick because he was also secretary of the pwd and i don't know what conflict of interest really there is but then he was also a member here he was also secretary so he signed the document giving us the first lease of this particular land that we are here and uh, there was an interview with penny quick in that magazine where he says that in 18 he was leaving india and uh, the golden jubilee was celebrated and he says not only was it celebrated i was the guest of honor and at the end of the event i was presented four photographs of cricketing grounds of madras and i was taken in my chair all the way to the carriage at the entrance of the club and then i was wished goodbye by the members so we were very you know karthik and i were very impressed by this and then karthik said somewhere in penny quick's papers i'm sure there must be a copy of those photographs now the question is how do you locate penny quick's descendants after you know 1896 we are now in 2020 so the search then began and this penny quick is venerated to such an extent in teni and other places that you have a statue for him recently there was a controversy on that and all that but there is a fan club for penny quick in the teni region and they name their children after penny quick and after logan who was the man who actually drilled the tunnels over there and all that so we discovered the secretary of that fan club he is now living in london and uh, we sent him an email saying that you know are you at all in touch with any of penny quick's family members and promptly one afternoon i get a call from this guy he is living in london he says yes i know the grand nephew of mr penny quick i'll put you in touch with him so we finally get in touch with this gentleman who is living in germany and after we had given up hope you know we sent him a mail there was no response after two months we get a mail apologizing profusely for the delay and he says you know those photographs are absent but i have the golden jubilee brochure of the madras cricket club preserved in my grand uncle's papers and, you know my mouth has still not closed after reading that email so i send him a message saying that we'd be eternally grateful please send it to us etc etc next morning scanned image with not only and the brochure is a four page brochure it has the four photographs that penny quick mentions there are four cricket grounds of madras one in gindi government house one here one i think is the presidency cricket ground and there's a fourth that i forget 
and these four photographs are there the menu of the evening is there and then it also lists on the back side the list of presidents and secretaries of the club till 1896 and that is when we realized that a lot of records had to be set right based on that particular brochure which we then did and we've also added an asterisk saying that this is this list is very different from the list that mr mitra mutaya had provided that's because we have now got this documentation i it would not have been an easy task to complete this book because i must confess to you here that i am a completely sports challenged person uh, uh, i have never been able to catch a ball in this life or hold a racket uh, sports masters have retired in pr frustration all along saying that you will never be able to make it in sports and how right they were they were so true and i never thought that our day would come when i would write the history of the madras cricket club of all things and this would have never happened had it not been for the generosity and kindness of all of you you all gave me your time you spoke to me patiently mr shankar mr aragapan and then mr everybody else over here in this audience some in person some via zoom several members who did not become presidents but who contributed hugely to the sport in this club i was able to speak to several of them great stories only some of which eventually made it to the book and you know i have if i have a weakness it's that i end up writing very fat books the uh, on two separate occasions chief guests have actually dropped the book because of the weight they have never been able to nobody told them that the book is will book will weigh so much this has been a great weakness of mine and this has also lived up to that prediction uh, we start with an estimation of number of pages and it goes up to much beyond but such wonderful stories which in my opinion really brings the spirit of this club alive my sons who are now both abroad always would tell me that there is no club like the madras cricket club because of the spirit of cheer that permeates this entire environment the moment you enter it we may enter it with all kinds of worries but because of the sports that is played over here there is an atmosphere which makes you very happy and when you depart you go as a very happy individual after having spent an evening of games or whatever it is over here so that atmosphere is what i have tried to capture in this book in this mr shankar was i think one of the great motivating factors he read this manuscript not once but three times and at the end of it has still found out one error after the book was published which means he probably read it four times but then that is mr shankar and i'm not going to tell you what that error is but there is an error let's leave it at that and uh, after that i would also like to thank my brilliant team malvika who always enters a high state of hysteria every time we have a book and only comes down from that level of hysteria after the book is released in between there'll be curses that you know this will never come out there'll be all, all it's dealing dealing with malvika is worse than dealing with every everybody else on the book ranjita was a pillar of strength because ranjita you know she has worked with mr mutaya over the years and so she brought in her own talents into the book and i think one of the great things that ranjita did was to create a summary of the earlier volume which really formed the backbone of this particular work without that writing this book would not have been easy and then of course karthik as uh, ramesh uh, mentioned before i leave you i just have one request and i think the madras cricket club must consider it clubs of our vintage abroad have heritage walks inside the club premises we today we have reached an age when books i think that we've come to the end of books things have to be taken to a different world altogether the digital age has come when if our history and if our atmosphere has to be captured for a future generation it has to move beyond books because this is the world of reading books is passing us very rapidly by every corner of this compound speaks history right from those three pillars that stand at the entrance of the tnca right down here you may argue that those buildings have all gone the old the markers are still there and when i talk about markers i'm talking about the approximate locations the stories we just need a few plaques to be put up point number 1 point number 2 we just probably need to have digital narratives at various places and probably a kind of an app where when people come in they should be able to go to particular locations and understand what the history behind that particular location was i think this needs to come about very soon if we want to pass on this heritage to the future generations 
Thank you very much for your time. Thanks a lot.